tomato garden tour. Yes, my first one of the year. And I will show you what grew, what did not grow, what I had to uh, substitute. <laughs> uh, this is Gail, the gardening gal, and today is May 31st. And uh, let's take a tour and see what's growing. Well, for some strange reason, um, a lot of my seeds didn't take real well, and they didn't grow real well, so I had to go ahead and substitute some of the plants that I was going to grow. Let's go ahead and go through them one by one. We'll start off with this dynamic duo. Over here, I have black cherry, and over here on this other side, I have fireworks. Um, I've grown black cherry many times in the past, but uh, fireworks is a brand new one to me. And these are two of my new tomatoes instead of the ones I uh, was expecting to grow. Now this one is one that I planned on growing. It is Prairie Fire. This plant has consistently looked terrible the whole time, <laughs> but I've gone ahead and let it grow. And I will show you that... I do have, if I can get them in focus, I do have some baby maters back there. Let's see if I can get them in focus a little bit better. There they are, right in the middle. So, yeah, Prairie Fire is at least going ahead and producing tomatoes for me. Now, let's take a look at the dwarfs. This is a new big dwarf, and it's looking really nice compared to how I've grown it in the last couple of years. Um, beautiful looking plant so far. It's probably about two feet tall. And next to it, we have Tennessee Suited. Now, I had not planned on growing this plant this year, but it turns out I had a little bit of extra space, so I thought I'd go ahead and grow it. This, I think, is supposed to have striped tomatoes. Here we have Rosella Crimson. This one is looking lovely so far, and I think I do see a blossom in it, so hopefully I will have tomatoes on this plant soon. Next to it in the bed is Sweet Scarlet Dwarf. Now this is my only potato leaf that I am growing this year, um, with the exception of another one, which we'll see later. But uh, this one's looking very, very nice. Now, this is Purple Rain. And first time growing this one, it looks pretty nice. Um, not quite sure. I mean, it looks like it's started uh, growing a little too much, if there's such a thing. But I do see some blossoms coming out. I'm not sure if they're showing up on camera. But... Uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see this. It's supposed to have purple tomatoes and they're supposed to be nice and big. Well, next to it, I have uh, Dwarf Arctic Rose. Now, I grew this in the past in a, uh, a maybe a five gallon container and it grew fairly well, but I thought that it would do better if it was in a raised bed. So that's where I've got it this year, and I see it's um, producing lots of flowers so far. Now, I got some green stock towers this year, and in this one, I have red robin. So red robin, I did plan on growing, and as you can see, there are a bunch of tomatoes on it. So real happy about red robin. I do have another one, but it's in the other tower, and let's go check that one out. Here is my other red robin in my other tower, and it is starting to produce tomatoes. I did plant this one later than the other one where when it was a bit warmer outside. Now, in the tower, we also have orange hat, and as you can see, orange hat is producing some tomatoes already. I have, I think, two, maybe three in here. Um, they produce delicious tomatoes when I grew them indoors over the winter. So I'm really excited to see what they're like uh, this year growing outside. 
Here is my token hybrid for the year, and this is Big Beef. I have grown this in the past in Florida, and I'm interested to see how well it grows up here. It's actually looking pretty good. You should have seen when I put it in the ground. It was sad. This next one is tied for the one that is most frustrating so far this year. This one is Pink Fang. And I tell you, this one constantly looks like it's going to kick the bucket. It's at about a little bit past the second rung. And it does have tomatoes on it. And I'll see if I can insert a picture of the tomatoes. Or maybe we can just see them. Let's see. Yep, there are the tomatoes. Sorry if it's out of focus. But this one has been very frustrating this year because it has what I will call the wimpy gene. And a lot of paste tomatoes and ox hearts in particular constantly look like they're going to keel over. And this one has been doing it this year. It doesn't look quite so bad now, but uh, I've almost pulled it a few times. This next one is watermelon beefsteak. It's looking pretty well. It's hit uh, just about the top of the third rung of the ladder, but uh, it's doing pretty nicely. This is Krinkovich Yugoslavian, and it is producing very nicely. It does have a tomato on it that is pretty darn big so far. Let's see if I can get it in frame. So we can see it. Now this is a pretty darn big tomato, especially considering it's one of the last ones to really start producing of the first producers, if that makes any sense. But Krinkovich Yugoslavian is doing really, really well. Now here's one of the plants that I hadn't really planned on growing. I had Dr. Wishy's yellow here in this particular spot, but it really was underperforming really, really badly. So I put this in. Now, this is actually um, an unknown transplant. I grew a lot of brandy wines last year, and this volunteered in one of my raised beds where I put some of my compost. <laughs> well, apparently this seed decided that it wanted to grow. I don't know what brandy wine it might be or if it's a cross, but uh, we'll see. Now this one is black from Tula, and this one wins the prize for the tallest so far. It is probably about, just about, not quite four feet tall, and it looks extremely stressed. Um, I suspect because it's the tallest, and it's been producing a lot of leaves, a lot of growth, so we've got lots of leaf curl on here, but let me uh, change my um, direction and show you the tomatoes. So we have some tomatoes and there are, I think about five on this particular uh, truss of it. And I have more tomatoes forming. Now this is one of my adapt tomatoes. And what it is, is it's a program by Seed Savers Exchange where they send out seeds, free seeds, and ask you to trial them. So this is the first of my Adapt Tomatoes and it is called Seuss. So this is the last one that has started blooming of my three Adapts. This next Adapt is the one that has grown the best. It is called Blue River. Now I don't know anything really about these Adapt Tomatoes. It's really to see how well they um, adapt to various climates. So we'll see what happens with Blue River. I'm kind of hopeful. The third of my adapts is called Glazier's Giant. And all I know about them is it's supposed to produce large tomatoes. Uh, we'll see, but there are tomatoes on it already. And it's about at the third rung of the ladder. Well, this is one of my substitute plants. This one is Boxcar Willie. And as I mentioned before, some of my expected plants did not do very well. So I substituted them, especially since I had some extra space. Boxcar Willie is supposed to have a lot, a lot, a lot of tomatoes, medium size. And I'm looking forward to trying them out. And let's see. 
I do see some first blossoms forming. Next to Boxcar Willie, I have Drushpa. And Drushpa I did plant on growing. <laughs> So it's doing really well. It was planted before Boxcar Willie, um, but it's a much stronger plant, uh, probably because it's been in the ground longer. So I don't really see any, oh, no, I see some tomato blossoms on the other side. But uh, Drushba is doing beautifully, and I can't wait to see what the tomatoes are like. This up here, because like I said, I've grown it in Florida before but I've never grown it here before. Well, excuse the dogs for barking in the background, but this one is Tennessee Britches. I had planned on growing Tennessee Britches, and I planted this one at the same time that I planted all the others in these grow bags. And by the way, these grow bags range from about 25 gallons to 30 gallons, and uh, it had been doing bad. <laughs> for meh, a long time. Like uh, last week, it was probably, I don't know, 16 to 18 inches tall. And now it's really grown up. Um, funny story, this particular plant is right next to, or the closest one to our bird feeder and bird bath. And the birds like to, um, you know, uh, perch on the cage while they're waiting their turn and uh, liberally dose this with fertilizer of sorts. So uh, maybe that's the reason that it started growing all of a sudden, but it's put on a huge growth spurt. This one is Kustra Lee. Um, I'm not sure what to think about it. This one, um, I tell you, it it suckers amazingly. I think I've got a double crown on this one. And the tomatoes are very much hidden within the foliage, which is considerable, I might add. Now we're going over to my latest uh, raised mounds. And this one is Golden Queen. So these were planted like two weeks ago. Golden Queen, it's uh, starting to do okay. It was a little uh, weak at first, but it's finally started to go ahead and grow. This was not one of the ones that I was expecting to plant, but like I said, I ended up having extra space and some of the plants didn't make it. Okay, so right next to Golden Queen, we have my lone tomato that I went ahead and bought. <laughs> Here's another black cherry that I decided to go ahead and grow. This was planted much, much later than the one that is in the grow bag. But it's starting to do well now that we had a whole bunch of rain. Okay, this one I planted actually yesterday. Now this is Boxcar Willie. So it's the second one of the ones I had grown. And I wanted to show you this one especially for the raised mound. So here's what I did. I put in the center, I dumped like a, a big bag, like two cubic feet of, um, let's see, in this case it was Fox Farm. Um, growing mix and then around <clears throat> excuse me and then around it I planted or planted I put some um, mushroom compost some black cow some whatever I could find that was kind of dense and it's built up oh probably oh I'd say a good foot now the reason that I did this is because in this particular area, even though the soil has been vastly improved by the comp by the wood chips that I put down last year, um, there are huge tree roots underneath here, and I couldn't put my cages <laughs> into the ground. So I decided to do raised mounds. <laughs> Growing next to it, you'll see that I have some Elysium, and no, the uh, cage is not going to be on the Elysium, but I'm waiting for another cage that I can end up putting on this guy. And for the time being, this particular cage actually is going to go on top of this cage, 
where I have some cucumbers, but we'll save that for a different garden tour. Okay, here's the last of my tomatoes. And this one, I think, really is the most frustrating of all the tomatoes that I've had. And this one is black strawberry. Now, it... Yeah, I don't know if it has the wimpy gene, it doesn't like me, or whatever, but it just constantly looks like it's going to keel over. Now, I have grown a few that have the wispy kind of stuff, but um, this one, I don't know. But let me show you something. The first one that has started producing fruit, and as you can see, they are quite black. Um, they get full sun at this time of the day, so we've got a truss here, and then up here we've got another truss forming. So here is the garden tour. Um, of the tomatoes, the tomato garden tour. We will talk about uh, the renovations to my garden this year and all the other veggies in a separate tour. But uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, like and subscribe because it helps me a great deal. Meanwhile, this is Gail, the gardening gal, signing out saying have yourself a great day. Bye!